Hey there, Trevor Hamaker here, and in this video, I want to tell you how you can spark more creative ideas for your ministry because I am convinced that you can be more creative. Let's get to it. First up is pay attention to what other creative people are doing. And you can find these people everywhere. Sometimes they're in Facebook groups. Sometimes it's videos on YouTube or different social media. Uh, sometimes it's just stuff that's on television. I know that one of the best ideas that I got here in the last couple of years was from watching America's Got Talent. Here's what happened. This magician comes out on stage and he wants to get some people involved in, uh, in his act. And so he took a Frisbee, he took a couple of Frisbees and just flung them out into the crowd. And he said, look, if you caught a Frisbee, you're involved, you're invited to come up and join the process and join the act. And so I immediately connected that with if you stand in front of the room of students and you say, who wants to play in the game tonight? Or who wants to play in the game this morning? And immediately, me, 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 especially with, with middle school ministry. And uh, you're always trying to figure out how can, how can you select different people and not always have the same you know, people, the loudest people who are up front. And you're like, okay, you, you, yep, I got my dog here. You, you, you. And so I thought, I'll just take a Frisbee. I bought three of those little Frisbees. They're flimsy little Frisbees. You can fling them out. They won't hurt anybody. And so all of a sudden, it was a great, engaging, fun way to choose different people to participate in the game. And so as you're checking out different creative ideas from creative people that you come across, you just want to try to figure out how can I redeploy those ideas in ways that make sense in my ministry context. And sometimes you have to scale them down a little bit. That's okay. Sometimes you'll have to kind of pivot the idea into a different direction. Again, I learned that from a magician on America's Got Talent. I'm not a magician and I'm not on that TV show. But what he did in terms of uh, bringing different audience members into, uh, into participation, into um, being involved with his, with his act, that's something I'm doing every single week that we play a game. And so I just thought that was a great idea. The second thing that you can do to be more creative is to ask different questions that disrupt the status quo. Now, some of these questions are going to be restricting questions, and some of them are going to be enlarging questions. And so I'll give you an example of, of both. First, on enlarging, what you would do is you would say, how would I do this program? How would I do this event? How would I go about this project or task if I had 10 times the money available to me that I do right now? And what this question does is it forces you to think bigger than what you normally would have done. It's kind of this idea of 10x thinking. In Google, they call it moonshot thinking. It's like if, if all of the limitations were lifted, if all of the restrictions were gone, what would you do? And that forces you to think bigger than what you normally would. Another way to think about it is what would you, uh, what would you do if you were trying to reach 10 times the number of students this coming school year as what you did last school year. Again, you might not, but what you're doing is you're trying to disrupt the status quo that shrinks or that narrows your thinking. But other times, narrowing your thinking or restricting your thinking can actually bring about incredible innovation and creativity. So if you think about, how would I do this if I had no money available to me? Well, that's really going to force you to be innovative. And so as I was working at a Christian school, we wanted to uh, bring some, spark some life in the chapel. And so one of the ways that we wanted to do that was obviously to engage students on a more regular basis. And one, one great way to do that is through games. But for me, I like to incentivize game participation by giving a prize to the winner. Well, there was just one problem. We had no money available to us in the budget to get prizes for people who would win the game. And so just sort of thinking, okay, we have no money available, but yet we still want to give a prize. What can we do? And it hit me, well, we have a concession stand that's available at all of the school's events. And so I talked with the athletic director, and we created this little coupon that we could give to game winners. And it said, hey, you get a free snack or soda at the concession stand. Cost us nothing, and it made the students feel like they had really won something that was neat. Um, if they won the game that day or that, or that week at the chapel. So again, having no money forced us to be more innovative, to be more creative. And that ultimately created a really cool, um, a really cool concept that built a little bit of school spirit and that drove more uh, attendance at games and, and all of that. So that was neat. Another thing that you could do 
is for restriction is to think what would I do if we could no lo- if we no longer had a place to meet and um, so again when you're trying to think about reaching students um, uh, advancing your ministry or anything like that you're just trying to remove some of the things that we take for granted and of course this just happened through the COVID-19 um, uh, virus uh, precautions is churches got shut down youth groups got shut down your ministry got shut down you couldn't meet and what did we see because of that restriction that disrupted the status quo we saw incredible innovation and creativity that was uh, that was leveraged or that was deployed at a very uh, at a very fast rate because you didn't have time to sit and think you know oh well well what if and what about it was like no we need to do this now there was a real sense of urgency about it and so necessity is the mother of invention when somebody says you have zero dollars available all of a sudden new ideas need to begin to churn or when somebody says this is no longer a place where you can meet well, all of a sudden, new ideas about how to meet and where to meet begin to churn. And so just begin to ask different questions that disrupt the status quo. And then here's the last part about sparking creative ideas, and it's simply patience. you got to be patient. What you're doing is you're, you're bringing in inputs. That's what you're doing when you're kind of paying attention to what different creative people are doing. You're bringing in, you're asking different questions of how to do this differently or how to do this larger, how to do this... Uh, you know, with less. And then it just takes time. This stuff's got to marinate, which is often why a lot of creative um, ideas will come about when you're distracted doing something else. Maybe when you're taking a shower or you're washing dishes or you're taking a walk, you're not even thinking about that thing, but your brain is powerful. And all the while, it's just churning. It's just churning uh, underneath the hood, in the background. And then when you're not thinking about it, when you're kind of semi-distracted, boom. The idea comes, the creative spark hits, and you've got your next good, big idea. And so one more thing that you could do if you want to do this is you could spark creative ideas by inviting somebody else into the process. Inviting somebody else with some different ideas, with some different perspectives into that process with you. And you could simply ask, what do you see that I'm not seeing? What do you know that I don't yet know? What do you think we could do that I haven't yet considered? And so there's all these different um, questions and um, help that you can get by inviting somebody else into the process. And honestly, that's one of the things that I do as a coach for youth pastors. So if you're interested in inviting me into that process with you as a coach, I would encourage you to head over to betteryouthministry.com slash coaching. You'll find everything that you need to find out about that right there. But in the meantime, if you want to spark more creative ideas, you got a couple of things you can do. One, pay attention to what other creative people are doing. Number two, begin to ask different questions that disrupt the status quo. And then number three, don't rush the process. Be patient. And of course, don't forget that bonus one of inviting somebody else into the conversation. I'm Trevor Hamaker, and if you want more tips and ideas like these, head over to betteryouthministry.com. And if you want to talk about coaching, betteryouthministry.com slash coaching.